Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I'll go over some regression metrics. To get this PowerPoint that I use in today's video, go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And then you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. And you can find my data science blogs and tutorials at evidencen.com slash blog. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. This regression metric is called explained variance score. Explained variance score computes the explained variance regression score. And how is it computed? Why y hat in this situation is equal to the estimated target and y is the correct target. So this is the y hat here is the predicted value and y is the actual value. So the explained variance is 1 minus the variance um, of the correct value minus the predicted value divided by the correct value. The best score you can possibly get is 1 and a lower score is worse. So a score of 0 0.8 is better than a, is better than a score of 0 0.6. So max error. Max error computes the maximum residual error. It captures the worst case error between the predicted value and the true value. A perfect score will be zero in the training data set, although this is unlikely in real world data. It does show the extent of error when the model was fitted. And this is how to calculate it. So this is the true value again, and y hat is the predicted value. And basically you're doing a maximum of the absolute difference between the predicted value, this predicted value and the, I mean this true value and the predicted value. Mean absolute error measures the, the average of the absolute errors between the predicted value and the true value. And this is a formula here for calculating mean absolute error. One divided by sample and then the sum of the true value minus the predicted value at this particular index. You get the absolute, you get the sum of that, and you divide it one by, you multiply that with one divided by the number of samples. Then we have mean squared error. Mean squared error measures the average square root of the error between the predicted value and the true value. First, it gets the error between the predicted and observed value. It gets the square root of the error and then get the average of the square roots. That's how mean squared error is calculated. And as you can see right here, the formula is very similar to what we have here for mean absolute error. It's very similar except we are not taking the absolute, rather we are um, squaring it right here. Mean squared log error. It is best used with samples having exponential growth like population count, average sales over years. It measures the logarithmic average squared er root of the error between the predicted value and the true value. So it's basically similar to mean squared error but with natural log application. As you can see here, the formulas are extremely different except we are applying natural log and then 1 plus the true value minus natural log 1 plus the predicted value and you are squaring all of that. Then we have median absolute error. Median absolute error is the median of the absolute difference between the predicted value and the true value. Instead of taking the average of the absolute errors, it takes the median. It is very favorable to all outliers in the data. So median absolute error is extremely favorable to outliers in the data. The best score you could get is zero and it never outputs negative numbers. And of course, it makes sense that it never outputs negative numbers because you're taking the absolute. Whenever you take absolute of something, you are taking the positive numbers. So instead of taking the mean, it's taking the median of the true value minus the predicted value. Now we have R2 score. R2 score is known as the coefficient of determination and it's often rep represented as R2 in this format. It gives you an indication of how well the model will perform on unseen samples. Basically, 
a goodness of faith measurement. It shows what proportions of the dependent variable, that's the x values, can be explained by the independent variable, which is the y or the target variable. So the best score is 1, and a model that always predicts expected values would have a score of 0. And the score can be negative in the case of a nonlinear function. So if you are doing, if your data is not is nonlinear, and you're using a linear regression, like you're using a linear model, then you might end up with a negative R2 score. Or a linear function with no y-intercept will also give a negative R2 score. And this right here is the formula to calculate R2 score. And this is what um, y dash means. So this y dash right here, this is the formula to calculate it. So this one mean poison, mean gamma, and Tweedy devi deviances. So these are distributions from the exponential dispersion models, which represent the natural exponential family. And these are probability distributions that include normal, gamma, and inverse Gaussian distributions. These functions calculate the mean Tweedy devi devi <laughs> defiance or deviance error with a power parameter, that's P. Higher power equal to less weight to deviations. So if the power equal to zero, it, then the mean squared error, which is like the normal, to the defiance, and it means that the defiance scales quad quadratically, okay? When power equal to one, and um, this is the mean poison def defiance, and this means that defiance scales linearly, and when power, you know, which is this P right here, um, is equal to 2, it's called the mean gamma defiance. And it just means that scaling the true value and the predicted value simultaneously had no effect, effect on the defiance. And if you really want to get super technical, this is the formula for dealing with this. But the good news is you don't have to do this manually, you can just use scikit-learn libraries that will do this for you automatically. That's basically it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. You can get the PowerPoint slide used in today's video by going to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here, you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get access to this page, and through this page, you'll be able to um, get access to this PowerPoint that I use in today's video. And that website, again, is machinelearningeducation.com slash free. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs, and as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blogs. And then if you click on free data science resources, you also be able to get to this page. That's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.